Once this occurs, the von Willebrand multimers are unable to be degraded into monomers. So we've shown two multimers stuck together. Importantly, von Willebrand multimers promote abnormal platelet adhesion. So platelets begin to pile up, resulting in the formation of a small thrombus, or a microthrombus. So let's show a bunch of platelets surrounding these von Willebrand multimers. As the platelets form thrombi, they are consumed, resulting in thrombocytopenia. So this is the first unique finding of hemolytic uremic syndrome. As you can imagine, the red blood cells that have to pass through these small blood vessels are partially lysed due to the mechanical interaction with the thrombi. So let's draw a big red blood cell right here. And as it passes through this thrombus, like this, the red blood cell becomes partially lysed. Obviously, the lysis of red blood cells results in hemolysis and anemia. So this is the second unique finding of hemolytic uremic syndrome. Likewise, the partial lysis of the red blood cell results in the formation of what are known as schistocytes. So this partially lysed cell is also called a schistocyte. And this is the third unique finding of hemolytic uremic syndrome. Finally, because this condition predominantly occurs in the kidneys, it results in renal failure and uremia. So uremia is the fourth and final unique finding of hemolytic uremic syndrome. So in summary, shigatoxin causes hemolytic uremic syndrome, which can be identified by four unique findings, thrombocytopenia, hemolytic anemia, schistocyte formation, and uremia. This is a picture of schistocytes, and as you can see, the red blood cells look partially lysed, and some may even resemble a helmet, which is why they may also be referred to as helmet cells. Okay, with this in mind, let's return to the image. Now we've added a guy next to the camera crew who appears to be writing down some information. He's actually a journalist, and is taking notes about how law enforcement is unlawfully shutting down this camera crew. Anyway, just like in our Salmonella video, the guy writing is here to help you remember that Shigella may cause Reiter syndrome, which is also known as reactive arthritis. All right, now notice that we've shown a big parade float towards the back of the image. Let's zoom up so you can see this better. These four characters will represent the four species of Shigella that you need to be familiar with for step one. We've shown them in a line with the species that cause the most severe disease closest to your view and the species that cause the least severe disease furthest away from the view. So let's discuss them in order. First, notice that the guy towards the front is holding up a disco ball with some poop on it. The poop, or shit, represents Shigella, and the disco ball sounds like dysentery. So together, this guy with the poop on the disco ball should help you remember Shigella dysentery. Again, because he's closest to the view, this species is the most severe of the four species. Next, we've shown a big buff guy who is clearly flexing his muscles and showing off his biceps. Flex sounds like flexneri. So this should help you remember Shigella flexneri. Because he's second in line, this species is the second most severe of the four. 